Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek holiday week Hello. break <laughs> from all the nonsense and craziness. Man, we're just hanging out because we have anything going on to talk about all the fun things we found going on in the world of <laughs> Linux, open source, and hats. Just for, yeah. just for tonight, over the day, <laughs> and this morning. I'm Vin. I am here sporting my Santa hat and my uh, traditional uh, vampire llama Christmas sweater. Um, thanks, Aww. Dan. That's Jill. She's done everything she could to be blinky, and hopefully it doesn't end poorly. <laughs> Pedro and I have a bet on that. And speaking of Pedro, he's chilling out, doing his thing, waiting for the Commodore 64 retro thing to go back to regular. Come down to a reasonable price. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so i really don't want to be price gouged on that one man, you, patience patience man i could wait i'm not in a hurry mm. julie you been up to anything man has the holidays the uh time off work the merry festivus yes been <laughs> yeah it 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 has and i just want to say the biggest gift i got this year has been Doing this show and getting to know so many of your wonderful and generous people out there in the Linux world. And thank you very much to Vin. Uh, with, this would have never happened without him. So it's just awesome. And happy okay, holidays. Okay, done with the compliment thing. I had it muted. I'm allergic to that. <laughs> oh, Vin. Thank you, Vin. I think so, yes. <laughs> oh, <Dang it. laughs> Ben muted me when I was thanking him. Oh, for... no, just, just you to me. They could hear you. Oh, okay. They can still hear you. Okay, good. So, and happy holidays to everyone, and Merry Christmas, and happy Festivus, or every, anything that you celebrate. It's a wonderful holiday season. Yay! Beat that, Pedro. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> it's like my Christmas, Christmas dinner was burgers. You saw the pictures yesterday in yes, Discord. Yes, also the horrific, uh, horrific, dis disturbing, <laughs> not safe for work slices of cucumber on the hamburger. <laughs> Blame Nori. Uh, you can totally um, go and tell Nori on uh, had a sensitive Instagram. Tag on it. Somebody got cucumbered. <laughs> <laughs> it's mind the corner on instagram um separated by underscores that's nori just go tell her how much it's not okay that cucumber doesn't go on burgers that's on her <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no uh we have a christmas tree that, that technically counts i guess mm. <laughs> I, yeah decided lack of christmas tree um <laughs> <laughs> What did I do? Yesterday, man, I, I finished, um, I put those dual gig necks in the optiplexes and in Jackbox, and I was waiting for Amazon because I ordered those cables, and they finally showed up. Ran Ethernet cables, and I've, I was forced to learn about networking stuff. I always consider that personal defeat because I actively try not to do anything about networking. But poor Stefan, my sweater. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's down to one strand. <laughs> He's, it, you know, it turns out, you know, I, I, I wore Stefan out a couple of times, got strange looks and I'm like, listen, man, it's a sweater. Jordan told me it was a sweater. That's that's this is a sweater in Canada, according to Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> you can also use it for um, cable management, though. So that's that's all of my sweater that's left. <laughs> ah, cool. <laughs> So now it's extra budget Mad Max um, cosplay. Quite unfortunate. <laughs> and I think I, just, I bought myself some dusters for Christmas because <laughs> the janitorial staff here at LJC needed them. <laughs> <laughs> so ta-da. Also, it might be a bit rubbish at buying myself gifts. Um, there's that. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> something that is a gift that continues to keep on giving. It's containerized yes. applications. Yeah. So that's the segue as I get to the show notes. Yes. <laughs> this comes from Control Blog. And to start off a Christmas adventure, Firefox contained in Flatpak versus Snap. Comparison. Oh, no. Who wins? We all lose. So what do we have here? We have a solid comparison of Firefox running in those newfangled container thingies. Uh, it's Firefox 71 from the Fedora Flatpak repository and 71 stable from Canonical, the snappy store. 
Oh, here's a nice little chart uh, with a feature set. Mm-hmm. Yep. A couple of things of note for me is like the initial startup time on Snap. That's a bit rough. <laughs> 11 seconds <laughs> yeah that's like i i've cracked open the uh system monitor and i'm looking at what's wrong territory right there yeah <laughs> it's, 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 then again it could have been you know i know they said they were working on like font caching or something like that months back and like on the they need to second. find a way to make it start quicker well i think on the additional yeah. starts it might come a little bit better but it's not all wins for flatpack because you'll notice uh, yeah. there are yeah Four mm-hmm. lights. Nope, there are no MPEG-4 codecs, so you're not going to be watching YouTube or anything like that out of the box. Those can be it. Uh, there's no webcam or mic support. Mm-hmm. Correct. Flat pack. So that's <laughs> blocked, And but that's available in Snaps. Look at that. We're being fair. Yay. Ha. <laughs> um, <laughs> for me, I'm going to say 100%. The moral of that story is neither of these technologies are currently ready for end users. It, no, I've said it before, and this is just my opinion. Mm. I a talentless act that doesn't know anything is there, there's it's testing in production at this point. Now, I encourage everyone to contribute and provide bug reports and tests in production. Just realize what it is because it kind of feels like it's been thrown out there as something that's remotely baked, which I don't believe it is. And I'm kind of scared that we're going to run into that situation like. Because we all know the best way to increase adoption is to push incomplete technology on end users because that has a history of working out, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, clearly. Yeah. Ever? <laughs> and the history of other, just like one yeah. example? I don't know. Windows, uh, there's an example that works. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unless you get a feature update and it wipes your entire home partition. Oh. Then again, Steam on Linux Aww. did that too if people moved the games folder. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Google Plus. A little bit of a side thing. Did you see the thing I posted on Twitter earlier? Um, Mind, Minesweeper in Windows mm-hmm. 10? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Apparently has ads in it. That was a TIL. But also if you make the screen too small for the ads, the game pauses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, you know that operating system that you still need to pay a license for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, the one of the things I noticed because I installed uh, Fedora 31 on one of the laptops and I got onto Firefox and I signed in just to see if everything was still there. And it's like, oh, none of the videos on Twitter are playing. What's up mm-hmm. with that? Uh, and it's like, oh, yeah, none of the media codecs are installed by default in Fedora. So, uh, yeah, that that is a very much a product of the platform. So I'm not entirely sure if it was just the um, flat pack that was uh, at fault here because he doesn't mention actually installing any of the codecs. Hmm. So we don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, and um, another thing that that's uh, um, a problem with the snap version of Firefox is is the theming and uh, the font. The font is different mm-hmm. from the system-wide font. And that's always been an issue that I, it, I've noticed for a long time. Um, but they are working on that. Um, but yeah, as Ben was saying, snaps are tailored to work with multimedia devices such as cameras and microphones. So there there is a pretty good OBS snap. And there are snaps of many games, both Linux and Windows, that run on Linux uh, because it has that multimedia support out of the box and you don't have to enable it like you do on a flat pack. Mm. So that's, you know, that's an advantage for snaps. Oh, yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. That could be an issue because, hey, man, we're coming up on 2020. A lot of us have UHD, a.k.a. 4K support. Seems to have like a little tiny (laughs) mouse cursor. But in snaps Mm -hmm. defense... I'm used to it, um, just in <laughs> general, <laughs> because XFC is like, what are you doing to me, man? Because I have two UHD displays in one 1080p that's in show note mode. And it's like, man, just quit. <laughs> Stop. Like, no. So I get like the big cursor every now and then when it flips out. Fun stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. KDE is getting better. Yes. 
<laughs> they are, uh, and they're pushing out more updates, and they're continuing to do the uh, weekly updates uh, for people so th that people can keep apprised of what it is that they're doing. And, well, uh, with this new version, uh, there are some new features for Dolphin, as in you can add tags, uh, you can, um, uh, when searching for system settings, uh, you can actually match uh, if you're searching through the search box you can actually match actual pages uh, instead of just the uh, top level uh, categories and they have a bunch of new bug fixes and improvements coming um, with the 19.12 uh, release and of course uh, if you're using plasma 517 you still get some of the new bug fixes as well um, one of the things that they mention in the bug fixes is the do not disturb mode uh they have fixed the way that that worked and i like it i like do not disturb mode a lot uh, <laughs> i haven't seen a desktop notification in months it's nice. amazing <laughs> and uh one of the things that they're doing uh to like get someone in the community to help them with is uh design uh if you want to contribute to the like default wallpaper for the upcoming kd lts release that they're going to be doing there's a, at the end of the article, there's a link there you can follow. There's already a couple of submissions. And the winner walks away with the Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 14, Ooh. which yeah, I had nice. a look at a previous version <laughs> of that. It was the 13-inch version. And those are damn good Ultrabooks. So mm -hmm. go have a look. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And uh, Dolphin, uh, being one of my favorite file managers, n now letting you include tags is in search is awesome. And I actually need mm -hmm. to utilize that more because I don't utilize it enough, but it would make things a lot, lot simpler, especially with thousands of assets for my animation programs. <laughs> so that that is a really nice feature. So looking forward to playing with it. Yay! Yep. <laughs> I do have to ask you though, Pedro, isn't the whole point of like KDE Connect like notifications? You're like, oh, this mm -hmm. is great. I can get these notifications on my desktop. Uh, uh, <laughs> all I want from it is to be able to reply to text messages without having to unlock no, my phone. You've made your choice. <laughs> no, do not disturb for you. <laughs> because even if you are in do not disturb, the um, notifications will still be displayed in the little notification box that's always hidden. <laughs> Uh, and if you go there and open it and say you got a text, you can go there, open it, see the text, and reply. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay. No more random <laughs> desktop notifications just showing up. That's mm -hmm. nice. This is not <laughs> the only KDE news we have for this week, though. Not by no. a long shot. Oh, a yeah. Shot. <laughs> Yes, this is awesome. So Caden Live 19.12 has been released with lots of great improvements and polish improvements in this release. It looks like someone uh, dissected a Christmas tree. With... <laughs> yeah, it actually does. It's got that color scheme. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So uh, one of the biggest differences you'll notice when you're when running 19.12 is how much quicker uh, the timeline response is and, and memory consumption is so much faster. It's got faster clip handling and caching, faster rendering, and it fixed the lag when adding compositions, which is definitely a thing, because sometimes, especially if you have larger compositions, it, it can take a long time to load. So they've uh, spe sped that up. And like Ven was showing earlier, they've improved the interface of the color wheels and Bezier curves. So that I'm really happy about. This is just bringing Caden Live one step closer to being the likes of Premiere, hopefully someday, or DaVinci Resolve. So looking forward to that. <laughs> and uh, Ven had some nice things to say, or maybe not, about the audio. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> what I did right there initially is the same thing I've hmm? been doing for Katie and Live releases for a minute. <laughs> acceleration, control F, acceleration, and... Fortunately, it usually mm -hmm. goes down to the comments section of someone going, acceleration, question mark? What I mean by that <laughs> is like timeline acceleration, hardware acceleration for doing the things that mm -hmm. you would expect from a nonlinear video editor. Mm -hmm. As far as the audio, this has nothing to do with KDN Live. This is a pro tip from Old Man Vin. I don't know what I'm talking about. Full disclaimer. <laughs> don't edit your audio in your nonlinear video editor. Use an audio editor, yeah. then bring that in. Okay, maybe... 
cut your audio, maybe lower the volume. That's it. That's it. You're like, it's crashing all the time. Let me see your pro Dear Lord, <laughs> I understand why it's crashing all the time. Um, outside of that, uh, I was just using DB for levels. I was curious. Mm. I was like, how do I get to this? I tried, how do I want to open this up? I want to play it. Download the app image on um, the Ubuntu's, not Ubuntu's, but uh, Debian's. And played with that. It launched, ran, and it's like, oh, okay, this is neat. Let's drag some um, LGC content because I still had the show from Saturday. And it's like, how do I get this audio mixer up? And I, you know, not reading any of the instructions. I double clicked on like the VU meter and it opened up a full screen page on like my leftmost mm -hmm. and, and like locked. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Nope. And kind of tapped out on that. <laughs> so they are still, uh, there's no presets for NV encode because we're coming up on 2020 and that's not a thing. Uh, call me I mean, yeah. if you want some like <laughs> same presets for 264 or hvec with nv encode i'd be happy to help you out on that um but they're still making progress which is good mm -hmm. it's yeah i just want to see that back end back end yeah see acceleration yeah. gpu yeah <laughs> to make it usable <laughs> be, oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Still and a great the, project. It, you guys are doing fantastic work, but I'm not going to lie to people about my issues. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Katie and Live, it kind of got, um, deservedly so, a lot of praise uh, earlier on uh, when people started to pay attention to it, mostly when people started to realize that OpenShot just wasn't really cutting it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Shotcut yes. also had its own limitations. <laughs> Uh, it's like, okay, we need something that's, you know, almost like, what's that one called? Um, Lightworks level. Lightworks, uh, yeah. But mm -hmm. that you don't have to pay for. Uh, so, yeah, the OKD and Live kind of fit into that niche very, very well, but it needs well, improvement. To answer that yeah. question, would I recommend using an audio editor in uh, DaVinci Resolve 16, which comes with Fairlight? Yes, why? Because it's junk. <laughs> it's a non yes you don't it's horrible so yes across the board i i would recommend that <laughs> um still we need to talk about there will be no con controversies that the way this yeah that's the way you say it, uh about this next story at all no Yes, none yeah. whatsoever, especially when you're um, <laughs> saying that a given distro is the best one of all of them Clearly, in a single year. The best distribution <laughs> yeah, no. is whatever you're running at home, because that's what you're about to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but no, in the case of Fospos, they decided, you know what? Ubuntu Mate 1910 is the best distro of 2019. And they uh, go down and they say, it's like, oh, okay, so we uh, when we say that it's the best, it's because of the following criteria. doesn't consume a lot of resources by default. It's like, that depends on what you're doing with it, but whatevs. Uh, have a desktop that doesn't lag or freeze. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Right? Uh, can <laughs> be <important>. configured however <laughs> they like, but not bloated with configuration options. I'm not entirely sure I'd call a configuration option bloat, but whatevs. Um, have a good access to wide range of software and packages. Yep. Yeah, being in the Ubuntu... Um, ecosystem it certainly does and then uh, here's the bit that i have to nitpick at and i do have to nitpick at something because otherwise i can't go to sleep properly uh have a good <laughs> appearance and look and feel by default it's green though it it, it yes. it's green it, that, <laughs> That green, it don't look so good. You oh, not one of Pedro's favorite colors. <laughs> Your prejudice against leprechauns on multiple occasions, Pedro, and I'm a little sick of it. I mean, it's the holiday I have season. nothing right? against the leprechauns. It's uh, that green. That particular shade of green. <laughs> Aww. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Well, I think this is a great choice, and I actually completely agree. Martin Wimpress and his team created a lot of progressive new features, such as the Mate Optimus NVIDIA GPU switcher we have talked about a lot here on LWW. And it is no wonder that Canonical made Wimpy their new Ubuntu desktop director. You know, the, all his hard work on Ubuntu Mate, you know, contributed to that. And ever since 
you know, I tested the Ubuntu Mate 1910 beta in October and then installed the final release. I have kept using it on one of my old ThinkPads and it runs beautifully. I mean, I've been using Mate on and off for years, but this recent version is really good. It's really fast and it's it's beautiful and uh, simple, works on old hardware. It's just great all around. Mm. <laughs> yeah, speaking of uh, horrible greens. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I'm sure there's a green theme for XFCE, man. <laughs> probably is, yeah. You could probably just use the Mate team in XFCE. It just applies the GTK uh, colors to it. Mate's absolutely not a bad desktop manager by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, nope. Think about like an updated version of GNOME 2. You remember GNOME before they lost their mind? That mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good old games. It is, it yeah. is genuinely a very good uh, desktop environment. And if you have a laptop um, that has mm -hmm. an Optimus card and you don't want to waste half a day trying to get it set up just right, Ubuntu Mate. That, like, no issues whatsoever. You load it, it's like, oh, you have an NVIDIA card and an Intel card. Here's the little picker right there on the status. Done. Maybe I might pop it in and take the last time I looked at Mate, I fed mm. it five monitors and it tapped out and slammed the door behind it. <laughs> oh, no, it works really well on multi-monitor now. It's much better. <laughs> you might have to take a peek. Um, um, oh, yeah, you're right, Pedro. There is more green in our future. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. There's exactly the same shade of green. <laughs> Just a yes. slightly different smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> So this is Linux Mint 19.3. Trisha has been released with several new features and is now available to download. And 19.3 uh, is based on Ubuntu 18.04.3 LTS and Linux kernel 5.0. And what's uh, there's a, a lot of new features in this version, including there's a new system reports tool, which lets you, lets you know if you are missing a multimedia codec or if a hardware driver or a new version of Linux Mint is available, which is really nice. And what's interesting is they, they replaced X-Player with the celluloid multimedia player, which is based on MPV. And that is because it, it supports hardware acceleration, which is always really good. And one of my favorite new improvements to Linux Mint 19.3 is high DPI support. And so it supports my Ultra HD, my 43 inch Ultra HD monitor in front of me, and it looks really nice. And it will scale, now it scales apps and text on, on my monitor much, much better. <laughs> so I was really grateful for that. And it was one of the reasons I hadn't been uh, using it as uh, in, with my multi-monitor setups was because of that reason, so. Yay! <laughs> I was kind of looking at their drawing application uh, that they've thrown mm -hmm. in. Like, hey man, Gimp's cool. Mm -hmm. It's got a steep learning curve. And I'm like, come on, yeah. it's not that bad. <laughs> it's it, I know. <laughs> it, it's only four steps to draw a circle and fill it in in Gimp. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you know, um, Inkscape level, mm -hmm. but uh, it, 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 it is much more uh, user-friendly than some of the alternatives out I, there. See, that's the thing, though, I respect yeah. in Inkscape, because they're just like, F you, because that's why. What, what are you going to do? Yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, like, three letters into Google and get the 20 other people who've asked that same question. Yep. This is cool. <laughs> They've also did, a, I think, some cosmetic update to the uh, Bluetooth utility, which is nice to see. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so your PS4 and your Steamy controllers. Yeah. 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 That's pretty cool. And I, again, I'll be the nitpicker, and uh, they have the new icon chooser uh, that they now mm. actually give you different categories to if you're searching for an item to assign to something. Where's the all category that just gives you all of the mm. icons unfiltered? Why, why would you ever <laughs> need that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because maybe you don't know which category is that icon that you really want to use, but you can't remember where it is. Do what I do, <laughs> just in case somebody gets on my desktop. Like, none of my icons match what they are, man. You click on the speaker. <laughs> Good luck. That's nothing to do with audio. <laughs> Uh, yeah. the, the, admittedly, yeah. the only icons that I ha use nowadays that I need to go find, uh, there's like, I have one set up for Jitsi to mm -hmm. automatically start Jitsi, okay. and another one to automatically mm -hmm. start um, Netflix in its own Chrome window. Right. That's it. Mm. <laughs> 
That works. <laughs> I, I, I'm still not sold on desktop icons. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I use very few. <laughs> very few. Okay. If at all. Sometimes I don't use any. <laughs> um, how do we do this next one? Is it Envy? Is that what they're going for? Yeah. Envy. So this is awesome. Envy is a new open source 2D animation software for Linux that not only does raster effects, but vector as well. And you can also import video and sound. And the layout and interface are very Adobe After Effects, which excites me tremendously because we don't have any open source After Effects alternatives on Linux other than DaVinci Fusion, which is free but proprietary. And so this is really, really great. Uh, the path animation vector effects are phenomenal and actually are on par with After Effects. And there's an example Ven is showing right now of, of tweening. Uh, from two different shapes, and it does a beautiful job with that. And all the bones for Envy are there, but it just needs a lot more effects. So just imagine what this program could achieve with people contributing lots of effects. And you can help Envy's development by contributing effects, which is very much like the philosophy of GIMP's effects and animation toolset. And you can also write documentation, which everyone always needs. And you can support the developers on Patreon. So this, this is something that I'm really excited about. I have been teaching Adobe After Effects since it first came out in, in the 2000s, early 2000s. And this is just the, to have something on par with After Effects on Linux. Finally, we're getting something that's open source. <laughs> So, yeah, this is very weird. excited. So <laughs> we, we did do like an outline tutorial, of how, like doing the tweeting with the E, but I, I needed to bleed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Probably alpha blood. It is the season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a candy cane in the background. Hey, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was the other open <laughs> open tunes that's out as well yeah so if you're looking oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah open tunes is is uh was uh based off the program used by ghibli studios mm -hmm. so yep. um and it, it's wonderful too it's it's one of my favorites but it isn't it's it's still more for um um uh hand drawn it's it's not so much uh for the effects and that's what differentiates this one from that one is it's more effect based, although, yeah, <laughs> you know, emotion graphics as opposed to animation, but it does, does both. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying this one has more like an FX package built into it. Co that. Correct. All right. But you know, the effects just aren't all built up yet. There's, there's a handful of them right now, but it's easy to make them. And, you know, that's just, that's that's wonderful because that's always, you know, been a because a, uh, After Effects, Adobe After Effects is proprietary. You don't have that option of creating your own plugins, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, they opened it up. I like I've created my own effects plugins for the GIMP, um, for their um, uh, GAP animation plugin, and um, to use all their filters with animation. And that's what this needs. You know, more effects. <laughs> Faster. Be even better. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about something I'm just a little familiar with. No, not vampire novels, <laughs> but still. Oh, so cute, then. <laughs> Linux kernel preemption and the latency <laughs> throughput trade off. This is from Code Blueprint. Co. Uk. All of this is going to be in our show notes. And first things first, because I get this question more than once a month. Uh, <laughs> if you need a preempt kernel. You're already running it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is not one of those things like, should I be? You would know if you should be because the thing you were trying to make work wouldn't so well. That said, this is going to roll through comparing uh, hard real time, pure real time. Don't tango with that. I tango with that. Mm -hmm. I to have two boxes <laughs> next to me with real time kernels. Yes, um, you do. <laughs> you have that. Then you have a regular low latency kernel. Um, Voluntary preempt. Humbuntu ships with that. Good on them. Out of the box. That is what your low latency kernel is. And just your regular 5.4 point not. No preempt. Interesting benchmarks here. We're looking at so uh, Sockperf, which is, you know, TCP throughput. Yeah. And you're like, Sustained. Yeah. <laughs> but we're seeing the no preempt doing good. 
and second place voluntary followed by hard preem. Then we look at UDP performance. Non preempt, <laughs> but no voluntary preempts higher. Like what's going mm-hmm. on here? What is is, is this it's just sustained. like? The, well, I'm thinking about what's actually causing it with preempt itself causing some of the slowdown with with the kernels handling the um. Actual... Well, uh, if you enable any kind of preemption, then that's going to increase uh, or decrease the latency with which something gets started or the kernel gives something a threat to start on. Mm. Sometimes, <laughs> but yeah, if you're opening and closing a lot of applications. That's your workload. That you're opening this, closing it, opening this, closing it. Uh, then yes, you really want something close to real time because it's going to reduce the latency that those applications will need. Yes. If you're doing mm-hmm. something that you're like a TCP or a UDP connection that are sustained, then you want uh, not something that will reduce the latency for opening and closing, but you want something that will give you the best throughput, Mm -hmm. which is why no preemption, like, say, the type of kernel you'd be running on a server. You want uh, that sustained throughput to have the best possible performance. Uh, And if you have a kernel that's always panicking, it's like, okay, is something going to come this way? Do I need to spool up a new thread? Then you're not going to get as uh, good a throughput. And yeah, the, the, the unicorn here is the voluntar- uh, voluntary preempt, mm-hmm. uh, which, yeah, like you said, uh, Ubuntu does now by default. A lot of distros do by default Not now. Not by default. Um, you got to install uh, the low latency. Ever portal. since, um, it ships I think it was latency. Susie. Yeah, yeah, ever mm-hmm. since uh, Susie uh, started uh, shipping it uh, by default, a lot of distros have started to move uh, in that direction as well. And yeah, the uh, mainline kernel has the uh voluntary preempt bits on it so you just need to enable them and voluntary preempt is great but you can't rely on the kernel to actually tell when something's going to happen Mm. you will need the software to be able to tell the kernel it's like okay i'm going to need these extra threads please open them for me it's going to be slower (laughs) now to put a bow in that Here's the flowchart. Are you running Jack Audio Server? <laughs> if the answer is no, keep going. You're fine. Yep. That is yeah. the only real world. Like we're talking, you can run a little latency kernel. You can don't hard real time. You don't want to tangle with because none of your drivers are going to work. And maybe yep. if you get an AMD card, that's going to be fine. It's still going to have some issues. If my Black Magic drivers for the Black Magic hardware, none of that works. Um, and you just run into more and more weird things like that. So heart RT, stay away from that. Voluntary preempt will usually get you by if you're out there and you're like, hey, man, I got an I2I Scarlet and I'm going to make my music. And it's USB, might as well try it. Um, mm-hmm. If you are running, you know, multi-track, something like that, you're going to have a dedicated box without NVIDIA proprietary drivers or anything like that just so you can have that heart RT in like these boxes here. I mean... So, yeah, this this does a decent enough job. What this is showing you is, hey, man, mm-hmm. network throughput changes a little bit. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Any kind of sustained, uh, any kind of sustained <laughs> load is going to be not as you know fast as it could otherwise be, but you probably won't tell the difference. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to <laughs> convey: is don't run out. Other than hey, I just want to do it. Go do it. Um, yeah, you're not going to see any difference like in gaming performance or browsing general desktop yeah. usage. It's just not going to be there. Yeah. It's good enough as is, but is it good as open Wi-Fi, open source Linux? <laughs> open <Wi-Fi? laughs> How about let's take an FPGA and make our own wi Yay. You could, uh, but, <laughs> uh, according to what I read, it's like, oh, best case scenario, you're getting, um, what open Wi-Fi currently offers is uh, 802.11a, uh, sorry, AG. Uh, so at best, you're ba- bound to get what is uh, 802.11n from 7 to 20 uh, megahertz. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ooh, okay, that's that's a bit slow. Wi-Fi N, that was the standard, like, oh, when I um, started doing um, Linux Gamecast, well, I was six or seven years ago uh, my laptop at the time had wi-fi n uh but yeah the thing here mm-hmm. is because of all the uh 
proprietary Wi-Fi implementations, being able to even have something that works that's completely open and that you can control both the server side, the AP side, and the client side, that that's pretty good. And I would replace most of the Wi-Fi cards on my laptops if there were any M.2 or um, mini PCIe cards that supported um, open Wi-Fi. Mm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we have needed to get away from proprietary Wi-Fi stack for a long time. This is just, this is awesome. This is something we need so bad. And what's really nice is there are two licenses available, one open using AGPL version three and one closed for projects that require it. Cause there are just, sometimes they have to have it, um, uh, you know, strapped down. So, uh, but this is a really nice, uh, it's 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 coming thank goodness i'm so happy <laughs> it needs to happen <laughs> yeah get rid of those broadcom drivers no <laughs> yes <laughs> you, know, you think about so many other components of like your system people normally don't take in consideration things like drivers and for your wi-fi and the chipsets and that they are just genuine black boxes that mm-hmm. you have no say so or input or control over and they're like i'm super secure i'm behind seven boxes yeah. like, uh, well it's stuff you don't think about they can always bite you but yeah. this is free range open source maybe it won't give people the wi-fi sensitivities uh, <laughs> yeah. mm, that, that will always happen yeah. but they do say yeah. that it will uh be I supporting really wish wi-fi I 6 somebody like that so i could chase them around <laughs> Look, I have people where I work uh, that say that they're feeling a bit ill because they're sitting a little too close to a 15U rack that's inside a cupboard that's <laughs> locked and all the walls are actually soundproofed. Mm-hmm. So there's no way in hell that they could be suffering any kind of anything from it. But what else? Mm-hmm. I know those people and no, yeah. no matter <laughs> The, no matter how many times you tell them that the phone that they have in their pocket is giving them a heck yeah. of a lot more radiation that that entire rack ever will. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know. Man. Yes. Uh, I, I, the, the, I hear that the Wi-Fi runs on radio waves. <laughs> I mean, yeah. different wavelength, but sure. Let's yeah. go with that. <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh, something that can use uh, some Wi-Fi, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, the Open eBook, which is uh, actually this is a, a project that I very much would like to try and put together myself. Once uh, they can figure out how to add like Wi-Fi or any kind of uh, wireless connectivity, even just Bluetooth would have been great. Uh, because Do you know what would be a really one... bad book for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Also, you probably don't want to visit Facebook with this, but uh, I was yeah. just going to write the history of countdown timers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, video or any kind of uh, updating um, screens not great because this is an e-ink uh, display type of situation, or even like a cheapo uh, LCD, like the old style LCDs. Uh, but yeah, that right now you like right at the top you have a state of the book so you can know exactly what to expect whenever you visit the uh, the site but yeah that the, they have pictures like that which actually looks very good it's like yes yes i want some more of that please but this is 2019 you kind of do need some wireless and right now mm-hmm. it doesn't have it it has a micro sd card that you can put in with the uh, the books that you want to read it's got yeah. little navigation buttons at the bottom and the power and that's about it but yeah, Wi-Fi. That'd be nice. <laughs> That'd be very nice. <laughs> yeah. um, do, do they have anything in like I don't know what's word? Oh, not purple. <laughs> I mean, that's the PCV color. I'm sure you could get your own in like green. <laughs> Plasti dip it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make a case for it. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, another alternative I was just thinking about is you could just get a Raspberry uh, Pi with an e-ink display and use that as an mm-hmm. e-reader as well. But um, I would actually, I, I like this project a lot, and I would love an open source e-ink reader. Um, I've actually spent many hours hacking my Kindle <laughs> to do different <laughs> things. So, <laughs> and 
including I installed M Player on it to play video and audio podcasts, including LGC. Yes, I listen to Linux Gamecast on my uh, Kindle at at night several uh, oh, for for a couple months there, and. Um, but I got, I also tweaked M Player's video decoding to play videos at a slower frames per second to match the e inks. It displays slow refresh. And I got it actually and it to look pretty good. It still goes like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It still goes, but it, it, was, it was much, the ghosting was much better once you get the timing right on it. But yeah. <laughs> you know, most people wouldn't care to do that. I just, I had to make it look better. <laughs> The only thing I tangle with my original um, the ink Kindle is it's got cellular built into it. Oh yes, uh, WhisperNet, WhisperNet, that yeah. was a thing. Yes, <laughs> you yeah. On Wikipedia. Yeah, I did. Um, mine has WhisperNet. Yeah. <laughs> so is that a DNS filter, or what are they using to I, try and stop people from know. accessing I, other websites? I know it's somewhere in the house because I didn't give it to anyone, but it's probably still going to well, charge being e ink. <laughs> yeah, what it yeah, is, is, that, is it, <laughs> yeah, you can go to any website on it, Pedro, you just, um, the, it's it's very limited. I think it was, was it 200 megs a month or something? It was something really low, but yeah, you okay. could use right. it. Yeah, you could use it. <laughs> they and hard I did, cap you after that? Correct, yeah. Yeah. But it yeah, was okay. really nice back in the time when you didn't didn't have devices with, with uh, free GPS, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So, so I, <laughs> it was nice. And if you're for just looking websites. at text because e yeah. display, then yeah, you're probably fine. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> we got to do a little thing where we thank everyone who makes this show our holiday dreams come true. Actually, uh, you make Yay. this show possible. Uh, all the yeah. beautiful people at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Every single one of you kicking us a little bit of coin, four quarters a week. And uh, mm. we're able to stick this horse and buggy show together and come out and dance and pay for all the bills. But we got a couple of <laughs> special holiday gifts that show oh, up in our mailbag. Got spoiled. Yes. Pedro's <laughs> sitting in one of them. Yes, it's awesome. Yes, I am. And uh, <laughs> I have to read the uh, the message from uh, Mike G, which says, uh, I'm not sure this would fit in your stocking, so you get a big box from Amazon instead. Keep up the good work. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mike G. It's like, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Really nice chair. <laughs> it's, it's really comfortable, too. It's awesome. <laughs> Where did you get Blinky? Yay. <laughs> and, and Mike G got me a cute penguin. Yay, it's a cute little blue penguin. It's so adorable. And he wrote me a note also and says, Hi, Jill. Hopefully these penguins will keep you warm at night. Keep up the good work from Mike G. And apparently I, I have another one coming from him, but it just hasn't come yet. So it will eventually. <laughs> but <laughs> here's, I just love this penguin. It's adorable. <laughs> that penguin is way too happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aww. This. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the Flight of Seven Cannibal Wall 3.0. Yay! It is. <laughs> Thank you for that. And the five hours it took to install this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Pro tip. That take it takes a minute, man, uh, when you mm -hmm. but there's another thing. Aha, <gasps> uh -huh, uh, here we go. <laughs> did someone buy us something? <laughs> no, I just like doing this. I'll see how long it goes. Yeah. <laughs> he was just enjoy. <laughs> da, na, 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 do that. Um, shake weight. <laughs> this thing. Shut up. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. <laughs> that that's kind of the point, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So cool. <laughs> this. <laughs> The shock mount for this mic being a large diaphragm. I was telling Pedro, I was like, Pedro, guess how much these cost? Like a regular spider mount. And like, what, 10 pounds? Maybe mm -hmm. 15 if you want mm -hmm. a fancy blue one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently those are a bit spicier. 100 bucks. Yep. <laughs> Basil. I love nice. it, brother. Basil. Simply because, well, for multiple reasons. But... I don't know if I would ever been able to buy this for myself on a principle. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a lot. Also, for your entertainment, does it, this is a big chungus with a bunch of like cables and stuff. And it came in a little tiny thin box. And I was like, oh no. 
<laughs> I, I knew Arson Crafts was in my future, which they were. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. I wouldn't watch somebody put one together on YouTube because you would think, a well, I mean, it's well made, you know, and to be, I mean, it's engineered. Would come with instructions. Hot no. It's like, figure it out. Anyway. So not we, even a link to a website. It's like, here's the manual. No. I had to go to YouTube, <laughs> type the model in. And the guy on the YouTube huh. was like, so these don't come with instructions. So let me show you. And the package is very nice. Anyway. Hmm. I, I, I got to put Basil's cool. name up on the board. So <laughs> you guys yes, you Basil do. gave you a challenge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I suppose Yay, we... Also need to thank uh, Brock. Yeah, our new Patreon. Brock, sir. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Brock. Uh, it, it's amazing. It's yeah. actually amazing how much support all y'alls have um, provided us over the years. And yes. um, yeah, no, I'm right now I'm sitting my key, sir, on a really nice brand new chair. And it's amazing. It, it's amazing. <laughs> You lot are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we love all we love all you, and thank you for my penguins, Mike G, and the one coming, and my one last week from Carl is uh, sitting right there. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> it is really also Basil to say boom, boom. True words. <laughs> That's perfect. That's boom, boom. perfect. All right. <laughs> Seriously, thank. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I mean, it means a lot. It you know the support that we've gotten, continue to get from everyone. Yep. They're like, "Hey, you're doing mm -hmm. a decent job. Keep going, monkey dance." And yeah, we do. <laughs> and dance we shall. <laughs> and we do get to yeah. show up and show people like, "Hey, you can do this." On Linux, you know, like, mm -hmm. let's, just, let's just obliterate all those excuses of like, well, I need to do this. And you can here. Look, here's proof. You know what? I'm going to make a guide for you. Make it easy. But, uh, yes. uh, Adobe, <laughs> ah, <That's laughs> son. we both know you've never bought an Adobe product. You're like, but Adobe reasons. I don't know. Windows hug. It's brilliant. So <laughs> we're going to give it to you if you're in the mood. <laughs> for some pie. For some pumpkin gonna holiday give it to pie. <laughs> Yay! Raspberry right. Pi has dished out over 30 million units since 2012. Awesome. That's pretty cool, man. You know, this is not <laughs> much of a lot of pie. story so much as like, you know, good on you, mates. Uh, mm -hmm. Because th think about that. 30 million. And, you know, 27.9 million of those were out of stock. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, there hasn't been a single um, Raspberry Pi release that they haven't immediately run out of stock. We've seen it happen with each and every single one, and uh, the Zero is the one that, to this day, is still out of stock. Mm -hmm. Some say it, they exist only in legend. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. We only know them as um, yeah, even Upton. Uh, he wrote, he's like, you know, the pie numbers get stale really fast. We sold our 30 millionth unit sometime last week, and this was from December 13th. That's really cool, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I did like Amazing. how Maddie was, uh, what other replies? It's like, we think. Wink. <laughs> when, you, when you get to 30, it's like, you, come on. A lot. Yeah. Big number. Uh, yeah. One of the things it's I'm thinking about is, yeah. like, in the future, you know they're going to sell out. You do. It's like you you can make you could paint one green. It's gonna sell out. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. I think I think maybe going in like the twenty twenty safe bet to like maybe make a little, a little, a little more. <laughs> a little bit more, <laughs> but then again, <laughs> if uh, I guess the next step up for manufacturing that they would get uh, the noticeable price cut. It would probably mm. be far too many. It could be a chunk And I'm chunk pretty sure more. that they would still sell them, but... Doing them in batches, I understand, with the manufacturing at all. <laughs> yeah. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that, like, with a Pi 4, I would have one if it was available, like, in the first month. Because it's like, yeah, I want to play with it. And I was like, I've already seen it. Now Pedro's got one, and I don't want one. <laughs> <laughs> yes he does unless you make like one yes. with like five gigs of RAM. my goal right now is to get him to uh, plug an hdmi encoder 
into the end of that. Yeah, it's like we, uh, we're curr- uh, seriously uh, remind me because I keep forgetting. That would be cool. Six <laughs> of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping track. I want to see how long it goes. I, I think it's a game. It's kind of brilliant. So <laughs> good on you, lot. Good to see. Looking forward to it. This is so um, awesome. Twenty. 20. So we got a little bit of feedback. Pedro, when people aren't busy plugging in HDMI encoders into the Raspberry Pi 4s, uh, how can they take a break and let us know what they're up to? I mean, mm-hmm. if they're not busy already, then they don't need to take a break. In fact, they can get busy going to LinuxGameCast.com, hitting the contact button, and filling out the form. Uh, there's a big fat warning uh, in case you're uh, trying to uh, pass along your PR statement. Just uh, don't copy paste. You'll yeah (laughs) it's not gonna end well for you uh but yeah if you want to send some feedback for this show or tell us about your raspberry pi projects or just give us a hint about uh something that you found out that you want more people to know about just pick lwdw from the little choosy box haven't used that one in a while and uh just uh fill out the form that that's it that's all you need to do (laughs) so haplo you know Yay, Haplo. Haplo's been in chat for a minute Aww. now. Yep. <laughs> we tweet. love him. So when, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, who was it last week? We we got a Hill Santa shirt last week uh, from Carlos, right? Carlos. Yes, Carlos. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what the hell Oaks is a guy to do on Christmas morning, but enjoy family, coffee, and Vinstone. Man, that sounds naughty, <laughs> but it's not. Um, <laughs> oh, he's enjoying you, all right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we have a fantastic um, original Hell Elks it's coffee mug. <laughs> I, I hope mm-hmm. if that's a fireplace and it's real and you're using it, you got me beat because I've looked at the fireplace twice already and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 also, I'm jolly because I didn't buy the harpsichord and you have a piano. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> nice mug, man. Nice mug. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. What else do we have? Mm-hmm. Up next, we have uh, Dak, and uh, is talking about dropping out. Last week, at some point, around 40 minutes and 42, wow, these shows have started going on long, uh, we lose <laughs> Ven's audio, but I can't tell because uh, his filter, uh, there's an H missing there, occludes his face so spectacularly. I was just wondering for a while, um, while I, I was just wondering for a while, they were sitting in silence, <laughs> space, period. Aww. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like he that. was. <laughs> yeah. <No way. laughs> At the end of the podcast. <laughs> I'll 100%. Um, a, I was talking to my lizard brother and sisters, all right? Um, mm-hmm. Lizard people represent. Ah, lower frequencies. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did go back and make some custom subtitles for YouTube where it just says hiss, hiss. <laughs> if you like the Rick and Morty's, you'll enjoy that. Uh a door with the automation just sound like some weird thing. Like, mm. right? Because I was like, what went on? And this was like way too late for me to fix it. Plus, it was I it was me. I wasn't saying anything like you know, it's like I like the color blue. Um <laughs> and just like one of the automation curves was just on my track. That's like, well, okay, that happened. Why'd you do that, Odor? It was like deal with it. I was like, fine. I will. <laughs> so I'm going to double check and make sure I don't have like a mute curve on top of uh, my track this week. Okay. Promise. Yes. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> so we got and this one <laughs> is from Bit Surface. Hello, friends. Nice show again. I found only linuxmusicians.com.org does not exist. And Merry Christmas to all of you. Maybe you mean this, parentheses, HTTPS, wiki.linuxaudio.org, slash wiki, slash start with org. <laughs> and that was referring the the website that Ven had suggested. <laughs> Forward slash net, uh, www, <laughs> onion. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently it's not linuxmusicians.org <laughs> yeah correct <laughs> misspoke um, what it is is cleverly disguised at linuxmusicians.com ah org. cool <laughs> so it is yeah. that one <laughs> okay <laughs> so that'll work or just type in Linux musicians into the duck ducks or the googles or the bings or the yeah, hotbot the alta it. vista the excites 
Ooh, Alta Vista. <laughs> I know, right? I was seeing how bad I could throw down, man, until I wanted to get off my search engine lawn, but I couldn't. Oh, that's where I got. Web crawler's still a thing, too. Ask AOL Jeeves. still has web crawler. <laughs> Go ask G. Ask, ask Wolfram. So yeah, Wolfram Alpha. <laughs> that's all it is. But yes, that is definitely a good, good resource for people looking to get into. Mm -hmm. Audio production, music production, you know, the hardware and stuff like that. You'll definitely find old man me there um, <laughs> offering questionable wisdom and sage smelling device. <laughs> advice. <laughs> With time, tons and tons of time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The spice. <laughs> ah, man. That I, I thought you were going to drop some, like, you know, interdimensional, you know, like wibbly oh. wobbly stuff up on. No, but I could draw flow. so much time right now that the doctor would probably come and pay me a visit. Speaking of time, we got to bounce out of here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we will see you next week, but until then, how about we get some wub? Yeah, wub, wub, wub. And some credits. <laughs> Yay! Uh, awesome! This has been a very special episode on Christmas Day. <laughs> Bob, Bob, Christmas Bob. Day episode of LWDW. Yes. yes. It's our <laughs> present to the community. <laughs> <laughs> and you are our present to us. All of you beautiful producers and executive producers. <laughs> <laughs> I got a duster. Aww. <laughs> We had lots of wonderful people in chat, including Art Theron, Steve Husband, Justin, Big Daddy Linux, Shay, Linda, two, Drummer, <laughs> Mir PPC, Justin, <laughs> Mila Gamer Linux, Mr. Alert. All my favorite people were in chat. Awesome. <laughs> Yay! We love you. Oh, I should have got two out of pom poms. Damn it! Have a pom pom.